Hey, Shalom Makim, Shalom. Uh, first thing and foremost, want to give all praises and glory and honor that is due to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. It was in the gospel of God, lifting up the standard of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Um, this is just a quick lesson through the Spirit. Um, earlier this morning, or overnight, somewhere in between there in the Spirit, came to me in my mind as I was sleeping and the spirit said, well, hey, go into entitlement. Okay, because, um, you know, there's a certain sense of entitlement among uh, the Israelites, man. Okay, there's a, cer a, a certain sense of entitlement that we all as men, we may have uh, had a particular mindset. We may have thought that we are obligated or owed something. In fact, that none of us in this thing is owed a goddamn thing. Okay. There's a sense of entitlement among all these groups, man. Okay. Even, you know, just, just brothers in general, you know, we have to check ourselves and, and know that we ain't really owed anything because I mean, when you look at the, the question that the disciples asked you, how was shy? He was like, well, we've forsaken everything and followed you. What should we get? And the Lord could have told him, like, well, shit, you ain't doing nothing. This is just your rightful service. You go, you just here to do and to worship me and do what I ask you to do. Yahweh Shai could have came with that notion. But since he's just a just power, you know, he was like, well, shit, those that follow me in the, regener the regeneration, you know, you should receive crowns and you should judge the 12 tribes of Israel. So there's ultimate reward for the things that we're doing if we endure. But. On the process of that, you can't be in, a, in this faith acting like somebody owes you something or somebody's obligated to, 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 to your presence or somebody's obligated to, to, to put you on a pedestal, man. Okay? And that comes from being in this wicked world because, see, when you're in this world, this world teaches you to be entitled because there's a lack of accountability in Jake, man. Okay? And you see it with our women. You see it with our children. You see it with other men. You see it as a whole spectrum. We feel that somebody owed us something and we're not really old shit for real. Okay. But what I can say we are old is death. Okay. Because clearly we've done and we, we, we've crossed every bridge to offend you. How about shooting how we shot? So if anybody owes us anything, it's really a first class ticket to the spirit world. And that's, and I'm just speaking facts, man. Even myself included. I'm not, I'm not entitled to shit. You know what I'm saying? And all the time we get in our flesh, we get in our feelings. Man, why ain't this going the way that I want it to go? Why ain't this being said? Why ain't that going that way? Why can I get that? And the Lord be like, well, look, nigga, I don't owe you shit. Just be happy that you got this truth. Be happy that you have this wisdom and knowledge and understanding and just do what you got to do with it. But we're not out to get high-minded, man, because oftentimes, man, when you get numbers, when you get uh, praises of men and all types of stuff, man, you start to get high-minded. You start not to, you start to look at, you, you look down on shit. You look down on other people. You know, can't nobody tell you anything because you feel that you are entitled to something because for the simple fact you're doing the Lord's work. Okay. And this is why you see guys, they fall out. They become scoffers. They become uh, backbiters. They start to reveal uh, particular secrets and all types of shit, man, because there's a sense of entitlement among Jake. Jake feel that their shit don't stink. Okay, but we ain't supposed to be in that spirit because we're not supposed to be high minded and being entitled is a thing of pride. Okay, and we know what the scriptures say. The scriptures say pride coming before destruction, man, a haughty spirit before a fall. So if you're in that spirit, that's a very dangerous spirit to be in. And oftentimes we have to check ourselves daily to examine ourselves to make sure we're not coming in that spirit because I'm not going to count. We all have been in that mindset. Or we feel that we are owed something because we've been diligent. Nah, you ain't owed anything. Okay, you just be grateful that the Lord has chosen you and hopefully that you're chosen vessel until the end to make it through this ordeal. Then when you make it, then you can start talking about your perks and your accolades and you being quote unquote entitled because you've actually earned something. Okay, you didn't bitch up in the midst of it and start scoffing and getting hurt behind dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? But you actually made it and you finished your course. Because when Yahweh Shah was on the planet Earth, he didn't he didn't act entitled. You know what I'm saying? He didn't come up to people and be like, well, look, I'm old this. And he just told us straight. He said, look, I'm from above. You're from beneath. If you don't believe I'm him that sent me. You should die in your sins. That's not entitlement. That's truth. OK, but off the time, you how I took the low as well. OK, so uh, anyway, this is the book of Galatians 6. And I'm going to start at verses 
2, it says, matter of fact, let's start at verses 3. It says, for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. And that's a lot of high-minded shit going on in Israel, man. Okay, men think they're above what they are called to do. You know, and this is the spirit that we not ought to come in. But even then, you know, you, Jake will find fault with anything. And like I said, I'm speaking to myself too. You know, not being high-minded, not thinking, oh, well, I, I, you know, I'm the shit. Nah, nah, none of us, are, all of us are touchable. Okay, all of us are burnable in this thing. Wake up one minute, man, you got the Holy Spirit. The next day you wake up, hey, the Spirit is off you. And you're teaching foolishness, man. Okay, like you got this new thing now about the name of the Heavenly Father. He has another name. Satan has another name. And the Holy Spirit has a name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's crazy, man. <laughs> I don't want to get into that, but that's, that's just a scary thing. People are departing from the faith. And you're seeing the spirit of, of seduction seduce these men that was once among, you know, the body, man. You know, they're feeling some type of way and they're, they're changing the doctrine. And usually when, um, you know, we go back and forth with other Israelite groups, it's based on doctrine. It's not personal because, like I said, we don't know personally what goes on in these men's lives. Though you can spiritually speculate, but even then, you got to draw a fine line between that because you don't want to over speculate on a man that you don't know nothing personally about. Okay, now what he's teaching Okay, and his behaviors and conduct as far as his doctrine, that's always call audible because it's about the doctrine at the end of the day. Okay, we don't care how NATO or anybody else in these particular groups are dealing with their women. We don't care about that stuff, man. We are defenders of the gospel. You know, so a lot of times, man, outside things looking in, you, you have to be on the inside to know what goes down. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're from the outside looking in, then you open yourself up to speculating a lot of things you have no understanding on. You know what I'm saying? And that's a certain sense of, of haughtiness, man. You know, so it says for a man to think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiving himself. And if you think you're something, then you are deceiving yourself. Like, oh, I should have this guy. I should have the biggest camp. I should have the most men following me. I should have somebody calling me elder. I should have somebody bringing me the last cup of shakar. I should have somebody uh, taking my car to the gas station and doing X, Y, and Z for me, man. That's a fucked up spirit to be in. Okay, because the scriptures say he that is greater among you, you're supposed to be the better servant, you know, and all the time, man, we don't, you know, get tricked into these titles. Somebody may say you call you an apostle, an elder, you know what I'm saying, or, or a bishop, or a deacon, however you want to be called. But in that role, you have to have the spirit of exemplifying you being servants to younger men, too. You know what I'm saying? So it works both ways. Yeah, you're an elder, you're a deacon, but you have the more responsibility of serving younger men through your works and your actions, man. Okay, and we have to make sure that we're going to exemplify those actions and those behaviors. But, you know, like I said, we're not perfect. This thing was never meant to be a perfect walk. Yahweh Shai didn't create us to walk in this truth, being perfect men in the flesh. Because we're completely flawed in the flesh, but the spirit has to be right towards Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that's what the Lord is looking at, the spirit, when if a man is sincere in his heart and his mind, and he's going to do what it takes to, to show that in his walk versus you judging me because I got a limp when I walk. Oh, that brother might not be right because, uh, you know what I'm saying, he wear a particular coat to camp. He might not be right. You know, just stupid, dumb shit like that. That gets us nowhere. All right. But it says here, but let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. And not in another. So when you're confident in yourself and you're solidified in your works, you know, and you have a certain sense of humility and you're satisfied with the spirit and the portion that the Lord has given you, then you ain't got to worry about what nobody else is doing. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, people get at us because we talk, you know, we get on other camps. We get on other camps over doctrine purposes, just like they come at us over doctrinal purposes. It's all about doctrine, man. It's not personal. It's doctrine. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to get on camera and, 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 and go into, uh, you know, General Johanna's personal life because, you know, that ain't got nothing to do with us, bro. That's that's his life. But for doctrinal purposes, saying that you can sleep with a woman on the Sabbath, that's an offense. We have to defend the gospel. OK, you don't have to be perfect men in the flesh to defend the gospel. Either the disciples wasn't perfect men in the flesh, but they was perfect to you. How about you? How was shine spirit? That's the case, then shit, there would be no need for our punishment because we'd be all perfect and we're not. OK, but it says, let him that is Salaki, it says, but let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man should bear his own burden. Yeah. 
Sometimes you got to bear your own burden. Now, the scriptures say, cast, you know, you bury, bury each other's burdens. You know, when brothers are in jams or brothers, you know, they need certain things. Yeah, we're there. You know, brothers communicate and reach out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're going to be there to speak with brothers because that's what we're supposed to do. But at the end of the day, man, you may go without. You may not have brothers to call. You may not have brothers in your camp. You may be two-man camp. You may not have the body to necessarily to lean on. But bear your own burden, man. Because at the end of the day, Yahweh Shai, though he carried his own cross, he had help with it. But hey, he went on that cross. His individual hell, he caught that shit alone. You know, because at the end of the day, bro, like when all hell break loose, you ain't going to be able to contact this brother. Hey, brother, where you at? If the spirit ain't got y'all already linked up and they cut the power, you ain't going to be able to contact that brother, man. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to do this thing and you're going to have to put your own works to test. And ask yourself, what have you been doing? Have you been sincere or have you just been backbiting? You know, so that certain sense of entitlement, that shit has to get out the window, man. OK, but it says uh, for every man should bear his own burden, but let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teach it in all good things, man. All right. So uh, I got another precept real quick. Uh, Yep. This is the book of uh, Proverbs. Nope. It's like James one. And I'm going to start at verses. Let's start it. Yeah, let's start at verses uh, three. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience. OK, because this thing is all about being patient, being patient, being patient with yourselves, man. You know what I'm saying? Forgiving yourself before you. How about you? How about I can work with you? You got to be a man before the Lord can really even deal with you. And that's a process, because in this society, we've been taught to be dependent upon something or somebody. You know, which comes with a certain sense of autonomy, because if you are depending on people to do your shit, then that means that you are entitled. You think that they're obligated to serve you. And nobody in this troop is obligated to for shit, man. OK, we all have to work out our own salvation. But it says here, but let patience have our perfect work that you may be perfect in entire wanting nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the most high. They give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it should be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that is wavering is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind tossed and fro. But the point I want to make was in seven. For let not that man think he should receive anything of the Lord. Right. When you're not solidified in your standpoint, when you're wavering, when you're not like sure, you, you wishy-washy, you finicky. You know, and it says a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. You know, so, hey, we have to be very careful, man. We have to understand the spirit we putting out there and, and, and how, how we're coming across things, man. And like I said, not being high minded. OK, because Jake has a history of being high minded, man. OK, but yet we can't even get ourselves out of out our, out our captivities. But yet, you know, men are high minded. Men are, are, are feeling that they're owed the world when, in fact, you're nothing but a vessel. You know what I'm saying? You're a vessel that can be disposed of. And I've seen it countless of time. Men profound men in this thing man that we just knew were men of the lord went back into the world now you don't know where these guys are at and then you got men in the truth that still think they're in the truth and they're not in the truth but yet they're pushing wicked doctrines you know heaping disciples after themselves so in discord you know what i'm saying finding fault with everything that goes wrong it's just like it's just you can never please jake you damned if you do you're damned if you don't and then off the time you're the bad guy or because you ain't bow down to somebody's uh entitlement you know but anyway uh proverbs 23 and i'm gonna start at verses let's start at verses uh six it says eat not the bread or eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye okay because a lot of guys man they got evil eyes they may be cool as shalom brother but yet they're side they're, they're side mugging you they're looking for a chance to, to, to feed you to the wolves or to give your name over to Esau. You know, they're looking for a time to overthrow you because in his mindset, he looks at you like you're great and he don't have that confidence. So therefore, he wants to destroy it because he feels bad about himself. We're not knowing that you a guy in a battle just like him. We're at war. OK, this is a spiritual war. When brothers are playing injured. Can't get every man off the battlefield at one time. You know, shit happens. We're at war, man. You know, we're not we're not Captain Savior, Savior Jakes. We ain't putting on a cape. That's that's not our lot, man. OK, each brother is in this thing for his own salvation. So he can find worthy between him and Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. 
You know, because at the end of the day, I have my walk. That brother have his walk. This brother have his walk. This sister have our walk. And we have to be accordingly, man. Following the true doctrine. Okay. But it says here, of him to have an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For he think it in his heart. So he is. Eat and drink. So he to thee. But his heart is not with thee, man. Okay. Because like I said, you got a lot of snakes in this thing. You know, they're your brothers, man. But when the occasion goes bad, then all of a sudden they turn against you. Like, wait a minute, bro. I thought you were cool. You know, but that come also with a sense of entitlement, man. Because certain men feel like, well, look, I need this position in order for me to feel important. Why do you need to be in that position to feel important? You shouldn't have to. Because every man is put in their own lot for a specific reason. And right now, shit is getting scary because everybody is falling within their lot, man. Okay, if you falling in a lot of the scoffers and the scorners in this time and you changing doctrines, man, and you, you're falling out over petty nonsense, then nine times out of ten, that's the lot the Lord is going to leave you in it, man. Until he comes and burn your ass up. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, you're going to see. But right now is a scary time to be flaky, man. You know, having this, this God complex like somebody owes something. Nobody owes owe shit, man. Okay, scriptures say be not high-minded. Let me uh, find that real quick. Uh, yep, we got a couple of precepts. Yep, Second Timothy three and four. Four is good, man. But uh, Romans eleven and number started verses eighteen. Uh, matter of fact, not nah, eighteen. Nah, that's that's that's. This is going into uh, the Israelite foreigners. You know, because you had a you had a uh, an issue among the circumcision that they was being high minded towards the, the Israelite foreigners. And that was a common conflict because the simple fact that Jake felt that they should be saved through the law and through the works of the law. But, you know, Paul was saying, well, look, man, these men have just become grafted in. So they're not really built up to that point to keep the law to the spectrum. So we can't be high minded or look down on them, man. You know what I'm saying? Like brothers come from all walks of life just because a brother got a game banging background and you've come and you've had you had both parents in your life. You went to college. You know what I'm saying? You had all the best cooked meals and you grew up in Lee Summers somewhere. Doesn't give you a right to look down on a brother that may come from the projects with a single parent home. You know what I'm saying? So not being high-minded in that regard. But I want to bring out this last precept and I end it. Several other scriptures we could have went to, but this is all that comes to mind for now. Uh, second, no, what is uh, Second Timothy, third chapter. And I'm going to start at verses... Uh, it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come it says for men should be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud proud is a big one man okay you got men in this thing like i said man they're so high-minded to the point that they can change the name of the lord oh the lord the name of the lord is grandmama cockamooka it's like some pokemon type stuff man but th this is the time we're living in it's scary bro you know, because it's real, real life demons on demon time out here. But it says lovers of them own selves, covetous, boasters, prowls, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. You got a lot of unthankful, ungrateful jakes in this thing, man. You know what I'm saying? One minute you don't show up with the chicken wings and all of a sudden he's looking at you with a side eye. Hey, I've been feeding you chicken for 10 years. But all of a sudden, one day I don't get the chicken. All of a sudden I'm the worst thing since fucking white bread. That's some bullshit, man. You know, and that happens a lot in this thing, bro. Like, like when guys fall out or change the doctrine, man, all of a sudden they have all this animosity towards the men that was supposed to be one of the best brothers in the world. And all of a sudden, because you didn't get the last piece of chicken or you didn't get the last cup of Shakar or last cup of Casamigos. And all of a sudden you acting like an entitled asshole. You mad. Like, nigga, sit your ass down. So nobody owe you shit. Who fuck are you, man? You piss, shit, sleep, snore. Okay, slobber your sleep. You wake up with boogers in your eyes, man. Hair is nappy in the morning. Breath stink. Like, the fuck out of here. Nobody owe you shit, nigga. Well, you ate the last piece of chicken. You know, I, I've been in this thing six years, so therefore, man, I feel like I'm on a level. Nigga, you ain't on no level. Sit down and shut up somewhere, man. And that's the thing. And the most high is going to shut a lot of you niggas up. Okay, because a lot of you just talking and you don't have no idea on what the hell you talking about. Well, so I was getting ready to, to visit a lot of you Israelites. Hey, judgment going to start in the house of Israel, uh, Israel first, man. 
you know, God's changing the name of the Most High. What kind of Mickey Mouse nonsense is that? But this is expected. It says, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, man, inconvenient, fears, despises of those that are good. You know, sometimes you can like, hey, you damn if you do with Jake, you damn if you don't with Jake. Okay, Yahweh Shai, what it tells you, it said he came drinking and eating and behold, a glutton and a wine bibber. But John the Baptist came neither eating nor drinking and behold, he had a devil. So you had Jake that appeared to come like a like a like a drunkard and a slut and a slobber. You know what I'm saying? Yahweh Shai come on the scene, just like, damn, who is this nigga? He, you supposed to be the Lord, but yeah, you eating chicken, you drinking, man, you probably a little tipsy. Cursing, talking shit, you know, hey, brother, what a, you know, I'm just speaking in, in terms, man. Yahweh Shai ain't never say what a hoe is at. Of course not, you know, Lord didn't deal with women. But you get the point. You know what I'm saying? The Lord, like, man, who gonna get to go, who gonna go go get some more chicken, you know? And then you had another man coming up, right? You know, didn't drink, didn't do anything, you know, just cool, tranquil, and just observing the spirit. And Jake talked shit about that, man. So you damn if you do, you damn if you don't. And honestly speaking, we really gotta be delivered from niggas, man. Okay, we have to be delivered from niggas, bro. I mean, Esau is the devil. We can expect that coming, but it's really you niggas. You niggas are you worse than a heathen. Jake is worse than a heathen. Your biggest enemy outside of Esau is other Israelites, bro. Like, you ain't even worried about Elam. You ain't worried about Ishmael ain't going up and beating up Jake. Okay? Fucking Ham ain't beating up Jake. Ammon ain't beating up Jake. Moab ain't beating up Jake. And Esau kills you niggas out of a necessity of fear, but it's really other niggas. Like, we got to be delivered from other Israelites, man. That's crazy. <laughs> That's why I say some of the worst and best men you will meet in this truth. You will meet some of the worst niggas and some of the best brothers, man. And trust me, I've been on the side of both. All right. But it says, uh, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, inconvenient, fiercest, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded. Man, it's a lot of high minded shit in this thing. Just because you get five or ten females comment on your page. Hey, Shalom, I'm good brother. Hey, guess what? That same woman is commenting on every other page. that got over a thousand subscribers, bro. <laughs> Straight up. So, nigga, don't feel special because... Israelite sister Sarah, I'm just throwing up some names, leave a heart emoji on your page. She's left that heart emoji on 10 other pages, bro, so you ain't nobody special. Either she liked the video or she's trying to get chosen by a man who she deems to be a man of the Lord or a popular Jake. You know what I'm saying? And this thing ain't about no goddamn popularity contest, man. Oh, well, you know, I'm gonna get with that brother because he got a million subscribers. You don't know if that man is a man of the Lord, you know? And that's another thing we can't fall into that mindset of because you're a popular Israelite brother and all of a sudden somebody got to kiss your ass. Nah, it don't work that way. So you younger brothers out there, be worried. Learn from the examples, man. You know what I'm saying? This is why the apostles give us stories on what not to do, man, when working, looking out for certain men. Because a lot of young men, they come up and they get high-minded too. They feel like, well, you know, I've been doing this thing. You give them a little rank, then, you know, they want to take that shit to their head. Look, bro, this ain't about that. You know what I'm saying? We all have a service to do and we are all servants at the end of the day. And we must exemplify those 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 ideals, man. And try our best to do the best we can. That's all the Lord can really ask of us. But it says high minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the most high. Tch. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. OK, so you got to, you know, be aware of, 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 of those particular spirits, which they are spirits like that that walks among us. So. Hey Amen. Lord's will is edifying, giving all praises and glory and honor that is due to you. How about you? How was shy? And with that, shalom and a bob bob. Shalom.